Good evening, everybody. Uh, after a long time, a very big welcome to everyone from Kahani Kalcheti. Uh, we have been off our shows for quite some time now, I think about a month and a half. So we are back and back with the bang. So the bang that we are going to have today is a Kahani Abda as usual, and we are going to discuss a book. The book is called, uh, this is what it is, No Return Address. And as the line says, that partition and stories of displacement. So we will be discussing partition and stories of displacement in which the editor, along with the some of the authors uh, who have contributed to the book, will also be here. So, but before I call them in, uh, I think it is uh, perhaps proper that uh, I tell you something about Kahani Kanjeti, uh, particularly for those who are coming in for the first time to our platform. But Kahani Kanjeti is a digital platform. We have a website and I'll give you the link a little later and suggest that do drop by at our website once in a while. Uh, we cover anything that falls under the big umbrella called art and well, popular culture. I don't want to sound very uh, intellectual by saying art and culture, but art and popular culture, which means we cover books, poetry, theater, cinema, music, and uh, run events, uh, well, features of sorts. The last one we did a major feature along with the live chat was actually on the poet Arun Kolatkar, who was also an advertising people. For those of you who know Arun Kolatkar or use or are familiar with his work, we have also had uh, Rubindu Shungit, artist from uh, who was originally from India and then moved on to East Bengal, East Pakistan, and then Bangladesh, Kalim Sharafi. Uh, so from Andrew Robinson to Kalim Sharafi to Bob Dylan. Uh, we have discussed different genres of music. Uh, we have had uh, Mola Rai Choudhury of the Hungry Generation coming live and chatting with us about the, uh, the particularly his, uh, his experience when he was uh, put into jail by the court for having written an obscene poem, which is hardly obscene by today's standards way back in 1963-64. So it's a mixed bag of a lot of things in Kahani Kancheti. We have, uh, we run a lot of book reviews, we run a lot of film reviews, and we have these chat sessions, and we love to stick to our uh, that grind or whatever you call it, is Adda. So it's plain and simple Adda in which we are actually in. And so today, everything for us is Kahani Adda. So today we are going to have a Kahani Adda. And so before I must first bring in my, the editor of the book, no, uh, uh, no return address. The editor of the book is uh, Munjira Mujumdar. And Munjira, good here evening. You are. Welcome. Good I'm evening, right. everybody. Super. Right. So Great. that's Munjira. And I love to uh, actually, since I know Munjira very well personally, uh, to introduce her formally is a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, like uh, we have to. So therefore, I'm reading out from the book partly to introduce you to the others, otherwise you know, we'll get into a very personal thing. Well, uh, she is basically a, a journalist, a writer, and she holds a master's degree in comparative literature in Jalukpur. Everybody holds a, uh, you know, people who write and are into this, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, business of research, they all have done comparative literature. And um, she has practiced, she's very interesting, she says she has practiced literature in a hurry. Uh, which is journalism. Uh, you have to explain that to Manjira. What does it mean? Practicing literature in a hurry. That's a nice word. For three decades, surrounded by books. Uh, be because. Plans. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, books, window plants. And the third thing, which you must explain, promiscuous cats. Now, what are those? Uh, we like to hear a bit about them. That is the only line I was coming to, to add some flavor to this uh, introduction. So there you are. And uh, so we will we will get on to it later. Let me bring in your uh, our other guests and your other writers. So first, of course, is Shomadi, Shoma A. Chatterjee. And there is Shomadi. Shomadi, welcome to our platform. Namaskar. Yeah, thank you. And, thank uh, you. Namaskar. This is, and, uh, this is the big yeah, one yeah. we have. This is the big billing we have. Do you agree, Monjila? This is the big billing we have today. No, I don't Shomadi. think so. I don't think so. You're no, embarrassing no, me. No, we, no but, I, but look at it this way. Uh, I think everybody is sitting in this uh, in this panel, in our guest and all of us, would agree on one point, that our film 
reading about film, film journalism, film study, we have all grown up with Shomati. That's that's a fact. I think since we were oh in, my god, you're embarrassing say, me, my god. No, actually, I, I wouldn't say that when I was in school, that would be me a little too. Uh, but certainly from the college days, we have been reading you in all all over then your books. And here is something interesting that I uh, picked up about you. Uh, you have a national award for best writing on cinema in 2003 for a study of the And once of, once of more in 1991, also 1991. And yeah, 19, uh, the, uh, okay. And then you, it says that you also have a national, uh, so that Poroma and other stories. So you have, you have been twice awarded a national uh, awards for, you know, writing. Part. On and cinema. While uh, you're on cinema, and uh, you have also done biographies on Pramutesh Borua, Riti Ghatok, and Shuchit Dasen. And incidentally, while everybody says that she's a uh, she's a film writer, she's also a short story writer, right? And she has a <laughs> number of short stories. She has three books. Am I right, Shomadi? You have three books. Yes, and right. One of them right, is Kamini. Ka Kamini. Then yeah. you have Baker's Dozen. And you have one yeah. more book, which is on short stories. So yes, another story. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and plus, she's on the uh, on the uh, film festival happening in Kolkata right now on the jury. But uh, she has found. No, no, not on the jury. Out. Selection panel. Selection um, panel, not jury. Okay. Selection panel. Okay, yeah. sorry, selection panel. Okay. Uh, so yeah. the, you can't be on the jury if you're on the selection panel. panel. So yeah. selection panel, right? Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, her life has been cinema, and we have gained immense knowledge uh, from from her, and that I think everybody will agree. Uh, Monjira, thank you very much. You agree with me? Yes, you agree, of course. And then we of have course, Anjuna. Of course, hundred percent. Anjuna is a writer. She is an advertising writer, and she is also story writer. Yeah, you. So she is a writer in plural, and. Uh, the most important thing that uh, for which you know we have this uh, process called brand positioning and you start saying that which is the most the first point in which you connect a brand with as far as Anjana is concerned and we are so proud of the fact that she is the tigress in the advertising business and if you ask me why she's a tigress because she works oh. on tigers and on sundarbans amazing and uh, she's doing something or the other all our facebook posts are about something she has done with the tiger, even if there have been stories on children, uh, you know, animated uh, drawings, cartoons, everything, but everything is around the tiger. And that gives us great satisfaction to the entire advertising fraternity. Because somebody is doing something really worthwhile and good. Anjana, thank you very much. And thank you very much for having yep. come into today's session. And then, of course, there is Oniket Mojunga. Now, if I were to say that he's from Phoenix, that is not correct. He is from Phoenix, but he's right now in Kolkata. So Oniket is a uh, mathematician. He's a oh my god! Man of, oh my god! He's a man of <laughs> figures, and he's 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 parked himself in a place called Phoenix in in the U.S. And Oniket, I need to add this that um, uh, though you you are a polymath, that is what uh, you are a polymath in his mind. That's what it says, and you practice marketing research for. Uh, an institution of higher education and occasionally dabble in the dark art of writing. I love to know what the dark art, art of writing is. We know so many dark arts and that will be interesting to know. I've read, as far as all of you are concerned, I've read all your books, uh, all the stories that are in the book. And uh, this is where I like to start. So once more back to the book published by uh, with us start in Delhi, and uh, I'll give you the link straight away. This book is available on Amazon. So once we have finished this discussion, I can assure you, go buy. It's a wonderful piece of short story collecting. So Mojira, none of your stories talk about you know the uh, partition, all right, but none of your stories talk about you know the refugee exodus and you know the political scenario and you know uh, whether it was Jinnah or it was who or it was nobody, but. It's a completely a new. It's a new way of looking at, as you have said very rightly, uh, the the way it starts. That first of all, we have talked about the Bengal province divided many times over 1905, Urisha and Bihar and Assam, we became separate and so and so forth in 1947. But um, the displacement, the issue of displacement, and all the stories that are there are all connected with the uh, fact, displacement factor. So. Tell us what made you take on this book. Okay. Uh, 
to begin, I I must say that uh, I really uh, I would have liked to have been either a detective or a psychiatrist or a potter. And because I am neither <laughs> of these, I I also wanted to write and I wrote uh, short stories occasionally. But like I said, my profession was journalism. And there too also, I didn't want to uh, be an opinion writer. I wanted to be a reporter and I, and I wrote other people's stories, you know. And when I was, I think I was one of the pioneer reporters in uh, English Daily in Calcutta. Uh, but I worked for the Indian Express, you know, the bureau. So from Metia Buruj to I, but there are so many places I went to as a reporter. And uh, I was quite fearless in that way. And everybody tells me I would have lost my way and I'm a little, you know, careless and all. But I managed to, you know, do it and come back home. So when I started writing, I, th st I thought it's high time I did some fiction. And uh, you talk, then, you know, you, dis you sort of ask yourself, you know, uh, your identity, you know, like, what are you? What, what, you know, and I've had many identities, you know, multiple identities, because we grew up in central Calcutta. Then my mother is a Ghoti, my father is a Bangal. So, you know, I've tried to look at life from various points. And so there's no absolute truth, you know, that, okay, refugee problem of course it has affected bengalis it has affected bengali hindus because i can speak for themselves but i was talking about post uh, partition kolkata the displacement you know which can happen in our mind and i found that there was a lot of literature missing you know from this side of the uh, country and uh, people in punjab you know writers like anchal malhotra and all they were writing a lot of stories you know which they are going back but in a very different way, back and forth. So that's what I thought, you know, that it did have an effect on us, the post-partition generation, and tried to capture that and the city of Calcutta because this division so many times, it has had a, a, a great impact on the city, you know, in, in a, I could say negative and positive, I won't get into the positive now, but in a negative way, like, Bengal has been now reduced to a very West Bengal, a very tiny place, you know, and there's so much of pressure on it because, uh, you know, waves of refugees came in. And uh, so I'm trying to look at my city, which I love very much and trying to get into these reasons, you know, which I think the next generation should also know about, you know, what makes a city what it is, whether it goes, you know, it becomes better or whatever, that's not my concern. I've tried to just humanize some issues and the displacement, like uh, lastly, I took, you know, this question of, uh, I think I'll come to that later. Let's hear the others, then I'll come to that. The motivation and what, what I tried to achieve with the book, but I'll come to that later. I think the others should also now. Okay, I, I think so. Um, you can, you, uh, but the next thing is that how, what was the selection process? Uh, so I divided, yeah. So divided into three sections. One was the displacement, yeah. you know, like Shomadi's story. And it was yeah. displacement in 1971, you know, when Bangladesh was born. Then also a wave, you know, of refugees came in, you know. And I think Shomadi's story is about that. Then uh, when Bangladesh was formed, uh, you know, the, the, I don't think the exchange of property happened then. It happened earlier. But like the Bindu Pali story about uh, a Muslim family who went to Bangladesh. And when he came back, he found that people were treating him like a stranger. You know, uh, his house, you know, in Beg Bagan, I think, you know, it was exchanged with a Hindu family. But when he came back, people treated him very like almost like a stranger. So he felt a stranger in his own house, you know which was once his own home. So I've tried to see from various angles, you know, it can, uh, this uh, displacement can affect, you know, people in different ways. Then Pishi's room, Moni Deepa's story, this Pishi, she was, became a sort of, a, she was isolated in this Bonedi Bari, now it's gone to ruins. So she found herself under the bed. She made a little house, you know, like a room, sorry. Yeah, and, yeah. and she used to yeah. talk about when she came as a refugee and she was a young bride and she had so much power as a bride and this and that. But um, 
you know, now she was reduced to being under the bed because there was no space in the, you know, in that big house. Children, you know, were born of her children. So, so these were like directly related to partition. But again, alienation, I'm not saying that, you know, alienation happened because of partition, but I'm trying to show, you know, Calcutta in different ways and whether uh, those people who suffered alienation came, uh, were refugees or not, I'm not interested. But in Calcutta, you know, you can have these, you know, uh, different kind of urban angst. It can happen anywhere, but you know what I feel that uh, how families became nuclear and so those alienation story and then belonging. Belonging, I've tried to see that whereas uh, being a refugee is not a choice, but being an immigrant, you can make a choice. So finally, you make your home, you know, where you finally, uh, you have to make your home somewhere, you know, whether you come as a refugee or you choose to go migrate or whatever. And uh, Remy's story is again, you know, I've seen Anglo Indians and Goans at very close quarters. So they also feel alienated when, you know, British, it's independence partition, you know, it's post uh, partition. And last 75 years, what are the, uh, you know, not problems, but what are the things which are, uh, uh, you know, in the city, which, you know, matter, you know, it, it goes beyond the glitter and other things. Well, uh, I think what we will do now, uh, Mujira, is that maybe we will ask the authors, the three authors we have here, right. to tell us how they, how in their stories they have related to the basic, uh, uh, the basic tenet of the of the book itself, the partition. And so, like for instance, uh, and this is for the audience. Uh, let me tell you, I keep saying this uh, not because you know they are here in by in front of me and we are, we are all at the Kahani Kanchetti platform. But the fact remains that some of the, almost all the stories, and I've read all there who are here, and also Shobitros, who is, uh, I'm sure he will drop by at some point of time. Um, they need a read. They certainly need a read. And they might give you, some of them do give you goose flesh at some point or the other. So that is the best part of it. So, Shomadi, uh, from, yes. I know you have done so many short stories, but uh, from Philip writing, take a I mean, from Philip writing to getting into uh, this story about the tree and the watch, wristwatch without any any, any hands. Uh, the the way uh, the, the way the, the tree ended was like oh, it really was oh, that sapling falling after she uh, well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, um, I I should just introduce myself as a short story writer. Everybody throws me away because I have I have been already stamped as a film critic. So nobody can imagine that I write short stories too. But I want desperately to write short stories and I must have written about at least 70, 75 short stories over the years. And I have three books, uh, three or four short story books. But even then, and no publisher is willing to publish them. The first one was, of course, Pe P. Lal. Uh, who, who used to who used to ask for a small amount in order to publish your book. Uh, but I was thrilled because that time I had not bring up, brought out any other book also. That was my first publication at all. And I had to pay him something, which was not very big because I was working as a uh, lecturer at that time. Um, but uh, the problem with my being a journalist and also a fiction writer happens that many of my stories spring from reality, which I don't know whether it's good or bad for writing, but I feel that what I cannot write as a journalist will come out as a fiction piece, even if it is based on reality. For example, uh, those of who you have read my The Woman Who Wanted to Become a Tree, uh, the, in the in the story itself, I've written that I saw a play, Gujarati play, which is true. I saw that play and I was so mesmerized and so stuck. And it was long, long ago when uh, the television was black and white. And they used to have a lot of Gujarati and Hindi plays and uh, uh, Marathi plays on, when I was in Bombay. I used to live in Bombay then. And uh, that stuck in my mind that how can a man become, and he really becomes a tree in the end and his family goes away. There the family, there the, the actual play ends. But uh, the, how this girl is getting uh, got affected and her whole life was determined on this play that she wanted to become a tree. And uh, in my mind, um, I, I agree with Monjira that displacement is actually a state of mind. For example, I wrote a journalistic article on how every woman is a refugee. 
you know she has to change her name she has to i mean now they are not changing their name thankful thankful for that but for financial reasons of course uh, they have to leave their parental house it's agreed and one gujarati lady actually told me the ladkiya betiya mehman hoti hai so at that time i was i was quite small at over 10 o'clock 10 or 12 years old so i didn't understand why she was saying that then i asked her what do you mean by ladki mehman hoti hai she said wo to thodi din hi reh reh rahegi na hamare sath uske baad to wo chali jayegi apne ghar so this is not apne ghar it struck me i mean I, at that time i didn't understand it but as i grew in age i began to realize the uh, spirit of that word the the danger that lay in that word they are not asking the girl whether you would like to go or you would not like to go then i myself got married at 21 and i was displaced completely culturally historically uh, socially uh, emotionally because i born, i was born and brought up in bombay in a very progressive family and i got married into an extended family in calcutta uh, progressive so far as the children were concerned but not very progressive so far as the daughter in law is concerned so that was a state of a refugee kind of a mind then again after 25 uh, 20 years living in bombay back again where my daughter grew up we came back again to calcutta and that was again i was again becoming a migrant or a displaced person or a refugee because i didn't really want to come now i have no not regrets but i really did not want to come to calcutta i was the only person in the three member family we have one daughter who did not want to come to calcutta no calcutta I, it's not that i hate calcutta but i love bombay more obviously because i was born there and my brother and sister are there and that time my parents were also there so i really did not want to come because i thought i was being uprooted so from this this story came and the other story of the watch with no hands that arose from a film that i had seen i forget the name of it. it's a very famous film a classic one many many years ago where the the child when the child is born he is born as old old person and he uh, grows younger as time goes on i think anjana would you know the name of the film or manjira might know the it's a very that famous benjamin, film benjamin, 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 benjamin yeah 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 benjamin yeah 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 benjamin, yeah, benjamin. yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The strange yeah. story Benjamin of Benjamin Button. Button. Benjamin Button. Ah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I saw that film recently, and it struck me. And then I saw another film by that uh, great German director, where this man takes out his watch, which mother gave him, and in that watch there are no hands. So mm. I, I was shocked. I said, "A watch without hands? What does it mean?" I was a little bit scared looking at the film. It was a wonderful film by uh, another uh, the German director. I'm forgetting his name. he died last year and uh, i was uh, it was in black and white and this uh, gentleman was going to attend a felicitation ceremony for being a professor for 50 years and while on his way he would take out that he he met his mother and his mother had gifted him with a wrist watch the wrist watch did not have any hands and that struck me oh my god i it, it never occurred to me these things never occurred to us that a watch can be without two hands because you always have two hands in the watch and the third one for the second if there is one so i was thinking are uh, if do two hands are not there then what do you do with the watch and uh, then i i i wove this story around this girl who doesn't exist obviously and uh, about this kind of a family who, who, which chooses to live in total social seclusion is it possible so i have seen it being possible because i have seen a couple in our neighborhood in bombay where the husband and wife were so so close to each other that they did not allow her, themselves to have children until they were 15 years married into their marriage number one and number two is they wouldn't even talk to us they were bengalis i still remember the gangulis they were called and they would not talk to anybody not mix with anybody even the shopkeeper in those days we didn't have um, this uh, uh, ordering online and all that stuff so they would just give a list to the baniya and the baniya would deliver the things at home then uh, towards the end of their stay in bombay which was for many years Uh, i got friendly with the wife and uh, she said no no we don't like to mix with anybody so that gave rise to this whole idea of a family which chooses to live in social seclusion would you call it displacement of course it is a displacement in the sense that it is a state of mind they choose not to socialize so they are displaced from the immediate society maybe by choice but is this the right choice i'm not making any moral judgment on them but i'm just asking myself this question so that came i'm not very happy with that story but i felt chalo chalta hai chalega kind of thing so this is how i write my stories somehow are related to some factual experience i have got in my life earlier and uh, they i i weave them into the story or the 
story grows out of that knowledge so this is all about and uh, then by the way uh, if monjira does not mind i would like to uh, mention my new book called backlash her stories and uh, it is a self published book so i shouldn't advertise it much i have advertised it a lot on the, my social media pages but i don't think there are too many buyers because i have not got any money out of it but it's okay even those who read and who like them is fine i think i've given you one more copy right manjira i don't remember yeah, now yeah in fact yeah, i yeah. think the uh, lady uh, the woman who wanted to be a tree i've taken from there yeah it's from there yeah it's from that, there. Yeah, it's from that it's book it's yeah thing about you know yeah 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the a, woman refugee in, and they had to keep hiding because you know yeah, at least yeah, in yeah, 1947 and... 1947 yeah. people had some kind of a paper to declare that they were EPDP or yeah, something yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. 1971 yeah. 71 nothing like that without, yeah. yeah without papers without any paper you know, that was more scary like you know yeah the, so, the situation was very different and the father was a very good mathematics teacher so he could get mm. a job but he couldn't stick anywhere but they were refugees she was not that was the tragedy of her life yeah. she went on thinking that i am not a refugee but i'm forced to be a refugee because of my parents and when she married she got married she was very happy that now i'm not going to go anywhere but the husband had a transferable job so again they had to go from one city to the other from lucknow to banaras to delhi to bombay all those places some people so don't think, like uh, displacements too many you know, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> i i don't think uh, many of us women don't like displacement because once you are moved into one particular city and house then you get so for example if now i was to go away from calcutta i wouldn't dream of going to bombay anymore because i'm very rooted here with my work and my work keeps me busy if i go to bombay nobody will give me any work anymore because uh, though they know my name maybe because i worked with them for a long time of course as a freelancer uh, they wouldn't remember and they wouldn't relate to me but now that i'm in calcutta they are always relating to me sending me emails giving me uh, sending me whatsapp messages and all that but if i go to bombay the situation will be very different which was the case when i came to calcutta nobody knew me they said okay okay now they are very famous journalists and they would just meet me and say all right uh, we'll see whether we can give you any work Uh, all right but you write in english you don't write in bangla and if i went to an english paper they said can you read write in bangla we are bringing out a bangla magazine so it took me 10 years of staying in calcutta from 19 in 95 to 9, 2005 to establish myself and to get accepted as a proper journalist and not only on films i write on other things also i began my journalism career as a writer of gender studies gender issues and then gradually since cinema i was passionate about i slowly shifted to cinema and then i married the two and it became fem- feminist film criticism at a time when the fem- very term feminist Sorry. film criticism was not there uh, among the yeah. things that i have yeah le- 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 that, that's about it later on i'll talk about some of the stories Sorry. that i have read yeah, if there we, is time we'll come back to you come back to you Sorry. and now on to yeah. uh, the investment of the project yeah. and I, i but what i like is this fact that you know when we are talking about displacement is not just the political partition or you know the no 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 uh, no no not at all we are talking about the state of mind and this is a wonderful <coughs> thing that you said so madhi is that the girl is a refugee because she thinks she goes away from one house to the other like the the gujarati lady had mm-hmm. told you mm-hmm. it it never mm-hmm. struck me that way but let's see the story yes anjana yeah. tell us about the pressure cooker and how did you arrive there uh well i was actually told that they were uh, monjira was looking for stories on alienation i got a mail from rim so i said okay what kind of stories do i have about alienation and actually the pressure cooker was something i wrote during covid because i was in a scenario where uh, both my parents were ailing actually and that was a bit difficult to come to terms with so and i said okay let how do i get around it how do i deal with myself in this scenario and how can i deal with the sense of alienation where the parents i knew when they were fun- fully functional are suddenly becoming not so functional how do i relate to them what do i do so i thought let me 
write the story and get whatever is in my system currently out of my system. So, in a sense, it is uh, autobiographical, autobiographical, and again, in a sense, like all stories are, it takes off into different places because uh, it's got to appeal to the reader outside. It can't just be subjective. So, oh, well, I think I've managed to do it, but I will also say that I think it's rather a, a gloomy story. Well, um, it's not so gloomy, you know, if you, if you I, I'm reacting as a reader. I mean, I know it's not a very, uh, but um, would you like to read out? Did you have the book with you, Arjuna? Can you read out uh, a passage from there if you have the book with you? Uh, yeah, I've got the book with me. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, Let yeah, me find that, it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And yes, the title was taken because it seemed like a pressure cooker atmosphere. So the pressure cooker became the metaphor for the whole thing. Arushi was always a little afraid of the pressure cooker. It sat on top of the gas, simmering like a shining bomb. Three whistles, she had been told. Otherwise, the pressure builds up and it explodes. The Bhavati had told her a whole host of cautionary tales about the dolls splattering on the ceiling and windows smashed by the violence. Khosh Mimsab was lucky. She was not blinded. The lid shot past her cheek. While he told her those stories, Ram went about the business of carefully browning the onions and the masala and the masala paste, stirring them around noisily and cheerfully, as if what he was saying was nothing at all. Then he would fit the gasket, followed by the lid, and leave the thing to simmer, while he went around the kitchen doing his other chores, as if nothing had happened at all. And then, hours later, or perhaps it was just 30 minutes, the hisses would begin to fill the apartment one after another. Despite all Ram's training, Arushi never got the hang of it. Her mother was better at it on the days she interested herself in such things. But Arushi's mother's interest gradually faded out of both their lives while Ram grew older and finally retired to his village. His son preferred to run pawn shops or become plumbers rather than go into cooking for a family like their father. So that, it, so that was that. Arushi began to wrestle with the pressure cooker we are while her now. mother hissed, <coughs> hired. Yeah. While yeah, her no, mother no. hired maid after maid no, and the uh, cooking gradually you. slid you into standard territory. Thing. From your laptop or phone? What is yes. it? What thing? Yeah, yeah, I've I, I muted her. Go on. Yeah, You're go okay. ahead. I think she's come back. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. She's yeah. back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Arushi go began on. to wrestle with the Yeah. Arushi began to wrestle with the pressure cooker while her mother hired maid after maid and the cooking gradually slid into standard territory. Their family had always been known for the excellence of their lunches and dinners, and the decline upset Arushi. But her mother continued, as she always had, unruffled, yelling at the maids with no lessening of her volume. The number of maids fluctuated. In some months there were more, and some months there were less. Arushi was used to wiping the bathroom and folding the mosquito net. It was a practical way of looking at life, she thought, a way that her parents' generation would never understand, even though there were times when she wondered how things could have changed so much. Okay, I think I'll stop there. Right? Right, right. But, and you said this, this is the COVID experience, right, Anjana? In, in this, this, this background is the COVID. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The background of the main story is the COVID experience. But obviously, like all stories, it takes its time building. And the pressure cooker, well, ultimately, because of COVID, all the people went to uh, the servants were less. She was handling the pressure cooker. And the maids were getting difficult. So that was the scenario. The explosion point. You know, we do come to... <laughs> okay, uh, I just need to interrupt. Shomitro says that he can hear us and see us, but he's, he cannot, he's not being let in or something like that. He has to be let in. Oh. Wait, one second, one second, one second, one second. He's hiding. There he is. Shomitro. Yeah, okay, I can see myself ah. now. You've yeah, got now you can see you also. We can oh, see you. Fine. Okay, uh, uh, so Good we know. Hang on there. I'm so glad you made it. Uh, there are a few comments which have started coming in. Shorbudi Choudhury is looking forward to reading the stories. And Urbimala Choudhury says that she's enjoying this conversation. Now, uh, let me come to uh, Aniket. So that will, and then I will take on uh, Shobitro. Or we will take on Shobitro, really. Uh, Aniket, uh, the drive from... Bagbaja and uh, Shambaja is more uh, complicated Shambaja more as you said and going right up to Victoria Memorial and most importantly and that's where I think uh -huh. about the story was pivoting is that uh, Savoy camera store which is still there. Now you are now in Phoenix for the last 32 years. Relate to us, do you feel displaced? Other than well, the story, uh, no, not really. So, so for me, actually, you know, as as, as Anjanadi said, my story is also like thinly, thinly disguised, you know, autobi autobiographical. And in fact, uh, some of the things are, you know, the, the photograph and the Savoy cameras. For the, those are all like true. I mean, there is an actual picture <laughs> that depicts me with my father, where you know, I'm about. To burst into tears, and I, I kind of say that in the in the story itself. But what kind of led me to this was not, not that part. It was actually, as I mentioned, you know, that I do have a part that has a few Rajanigandha stock, and 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 it because Phoenix is 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 very hot most of the time, and it's kind of you know tropical or subtropical, uh, kind of arid um, desert. Um, yeah, kind of that kind of a uh, yeah uh, milieu. So uh, Rajanigan that does grow there, and the, the, the plant that I have actually came from Hawaii. So a friend brought it and gave it to another friend who gave it to a, you know a, a relative of mine, and I finally got it from them. So and you know so that one evening when I was returning and and see as you know Rajanigan will will only have fragrance. During the night, right in the evening, right. That's why it's called around the garden, right? During the day, even if you go close to it, you won't feel anything. So I suddenly got that whiff when I was about to open my, you know, the door of my house. So that kind of brought me back to like essentially Kolkata, and so that's yeah. where so we came together. Mm. Uh, yeah. Why do you call it this uh, art of writing to be a dry, a dark art? Still of writing, I guess. <laughs> because yeah. I'm not good at it. Or was it to add a few lines in what? Uh, yeah, yeah. So dark, you know, I have not. Uh, from, from, yeah, from that some problem is there with the sound. Is there yeah, there is. There is. Yeah, there is a. There is an external, external sound. I think television is on at Shomitro's place. You know. Yeah, just to say, you know, his mother, you know, his mother, she, that is her entertainment, no? Like, okay, yeah, okay, so okay. Yeah, he takes care yeah. of his, you know, mom. Yeah, yeah but... Right. Oh, no, it's... There we are. Yeah. Yes. So Sorry for that. You still want to continue writing more stories? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I would love to, but again, as I said, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not my profession, but hopefully, you know, I can, if I have some time, you know, like. He, he hated maths when he was young. He hated it, you know, he used to edit all the Xavier's, yeah. you know, no, because, magazine. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, for me, uh, somebody who has been, uh, like the like oh. the word that you used, uh, Munjira used, uh, 
born and raised in Kolkata till I till I moved out. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the whole the, the description, and I was feeling it every moment of it, the tram car ride, the Victoria, and that one day you had planned to walk down from Bangladesh to Gold Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. that, I think 14 a, kilometers, a yeah, yeah. That was a remarkable thing of 14 kilometers, and you mentioned that. So, well, that's a polymath or whatever, that's a mathematician giving you uh, a calculation 14 kilometers from Shambhaja to, uh, to Gold Park, which was one of your... Uh, Aids. Okay, now we have Shomitro here. I'm sorry, Shomitro, we, we, had, we, we, we brought you a little late. Um, but there's something interesting I must, uh, in introducing you to uh, the, the audience, I must tell you this, that uh, competitive literature, Jadapur. And then, in 1985, he lands up in Paris, uh, <laughs> apparently to meet Samuel Beckett and uh, do a thesis on Beckett's novels. Well, um, and also, you know, uh, the hidden intention of learning how to be French. Uh, That's right. That is something that we can quiz you on a letter that what is to be a French. Okay. And then he comes back to Calcutta yeah. and he works for the, the journalist with the Telegraph and the Statesman. <coughs> and uh, he then launches himself as a freelancer and churned out fiction, collection of short stories and a novel. Well, the last story that we published, had here, by the, way. Uh, the revolution. Uh, it has been which one? I said none of it published. I mean, uh, this is the first time I'm being yeah, seriously published by anybody. I mean, I'm uh, <laughs> a, a wannabe writer so far. I have written substantially, but none of it has been published. I mean, uh, excepting for one story which was published by Penguin in the so, anthology of uh, new uh, English writing so, in India. So the novel uh, hasn't happened, was way you back see. in 2006. After that, this is my right. first uh, publication. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, but show me to why not the subject of this uh, um, Samuel Beckett and you know the trip to Paris. I just want to make, mention something on the side. Um, some years, uh, some uh, just before COVID hit, uh, that point of time, Kani Kanchiti was doing these uh, you know chat shows, actual live chat shows, because Oxford in Delhi would give us space, you know, one day a one day a month, so we would land up. And uh, we got this lady who actually is a professor in English in Delhi University, uh, forget her name, but she had, she was supposed to be an expert on Beckett. And uh, so I invited her to be the guest speaker. And she said that, uh, how do you want to put up the poster or the social media post? So she said, use the word silence. So because everything about Beckett is silence. And uh, then she said that I had gone across and I, she met Becky. She had supposedly coffee with her. So obviously our next question was, what did Beckett say? And the answer was very simple, silence. Apparently he <laughs> spoke so little that it was equal to the Beckett's logic of silence. Now, I thought since Beckett <laughs> came up in your introduction, I'll just mention that in the passing. But this story about, um, <laughs> this story about your, uh, uh, this entering the house and finding that there's a takeover. And believe you me, it's a pretty there's long no story in that sense. In it's the, probably the longest in the book. Am I right, Anjira? Yes. Yeah. 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 In fact, you know, people have told me yeah. that uh, <laughs> they try to, they asked me the justification of inclusion of this uh, story. But I feel, you know, more and more, I think it kind of, you know, uh, adds up to the question of displacement. It's a novelette. It's you a novelette. You can call it a novelette. Right. Novella, I think. yeah. So yeah, I think novelette. displacement okay. comes, you know, displacement can come from any which area. You know, it's not very uh, specific in terms of, uh, you know, yeah, It's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. It's a concept. Yeah, yeah. but in my case, it's not and, a state of yeah. mind. It's actually displacement because the people, the family of yeah. destitutes that you're talking no, about. No, for your story, yes. Is for that, your story, uh, mm. they, are, they have been displaced by floods. It does mm. mention. Mm. So that's mm. very common. No, in your story, about. it's physical. In your story, it's physical. But in some right. cases, as Ranjira says, it can be no, conceptual. No, but you know, no. like uh, it's still a, it's still a kind of a metaphor. It can work like the hunter right. also, like you know, yeah. uh, 
see we keep talking about coming from across the border but somebody pointed out that even the people on this side of the border had to adjust to uh, yeah. many things and then they said you know somebody raised no but this is not their land i said it's not a question of my land and your land but they did mm -hmm. you know because they suddenly felt that gentile life was changed overnight for the mm -hmm. you know the goatees so you you can see it from various angles there's no in yeah, fiction yeah. there's no one you know view that's why fiction humanizes the issues unlike you yeah. know writing or opinion and widens the horizon widens the horizon right yeah. right widens. yeah 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 very true yeah. But Shobhitra, I must also tell you that the narrative, when I say it's a, it's a novella, so it's not just, you know, ending up in three pages or five pages. Uh, it's a novella, but, you know, when I started reading it, I, I was, uh, you know, that, that factor of, okay, what happens next? What happens next? And there are some of it, and when I was telling this to Monjira, as a matter of fact, about my uh, response to the story, and I was not getting the right word, and she actually said, it's a little Kafkaesque, perhaps. I said, yeah. That's the word. It's very Kafkaesque, you know, to find yourself in a position like that uh, mm -hmm. and the entire takeover. So, it's, yeah, it's a displacement, but I think the narrative, uh, I would, uh, I enjoyed the narrative of, and I think at some point of time I had finished up after the third, the third chapter, if you call it. And uh, mm -hmm. I had to find some time because I couldn't wait to finish up and finally find what happens in the end. So that has a very interesting day. And mm -hmm. I'm sure those who are going to read the book. And I have put up a link here uh, in the chat box, uh, the Amazon link, which you can click and buy the book. You can do it right now. You can do it right after this. And please copy paste that and keep it. If you all go to Amazon, the book is right up there. No open address. OK, Monjira, coming back now. Now that we, we have had a reasonably uh, detailed discussion on if the authors, what now? Uh, what, what now? You mean, you mean uh, my what, what my next book is going now? to be? <laughs> I didn't get your question. Sorry. Going to be an, uh, is it, um, are you going to continue the partition story? Yeah, I'm saying are you going to continue this partition? You must be. You, I'm sure after a thing like this, there must be a plan to the next, the, 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 the next. Uh, of course, of campaign, course. Yeah, yeah, I want to. I, I, I've been told that you know Bengalis think the partition <laughs> begins with. Uh, at the Sialda station, but I want to go back further and discover more stories and, uh, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, once I got a call from Mullika Basu, uh, Jyoti Basu's granddaughter, eldest granddaughter, granddaughter, and she's apparently a food writer, and she said, you know, I saw on the internet you have written something on Mishtis of Bengal. So give me some uh, Mishtis of East Bengal, because which got lost. So I said, you know, I have not really thought about it. And as I was digging, I found there were a lot of Mishtis and, you know, things which got lost because people were, you know, in the bid to survival, like uh, in a bid to survive, you know, survival bid. Uh, a lot of fine things got lost also na, in our culture. There were a lot of, you know, art. And then when the, like, say, weavers came, uh, there were a lot of patterns which uh, uh, they lost along the way, you know, design. So, so many things also got lost, you know. But uh, I like the review, you know, with Salil Mishra in the Tribune where he has said uh, there were so many choices that opened up and then so many choices also closed. So that also happened. It's a way of looking at it, isn't it, you know? Like partition museum, if you go, you will find that you it know is. the the but, but rababi must, uh, rababi you know, players. You know the rababi players used to be a certain sect, so which went with that uh, uh, music, you know the songs. So when those players were left okay. behind, then that artist team also got uh, disrupted or something like that. I'm not uh, very sure right now, but yes. uh, you lose something along the way. You no. Know? So to capture those things. And also talking about talking about mysteries, I think one thing that is that has been left behind by, by, by not not by choice but by default is uh, Mukta Gacha and Monda, you know, the famous store in Mukta Gacha in Baiman Singh who sell uh, probably the only store in Bangladesh which sell 
Mondas. I don't know if you know about this, but it's it's a kind what of what is Monda? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Monda Mita. Monda Mita Mita na. Oh. No, no, I, I know the phrase. The Misti Monda. Monda Misti. Mm. I, I don't know that there is a separate food called Monda. I thought it was just a phrase. Because you are a Mumbaiker. That's why you don't know so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> मंडामिटाइट <laughs> the concept of the displacement of the mind and all the takeover no, it's, 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 it's not a mental displacement in my case it's a family of refugees that are somehow intruded into this person's no. house and uh, this person he's a, a corporate honcho and uh, he's steeped in the culture of capitalism and suddenly he finds himself facing an onslaught of uh, a criminal assault on on one of the fundamental tenets of capitalism which is right to property and uh, the story develops from there and um, it's a um, it's a dark tale uh, i have basically tried to show uh, i have to i have uh, basically tried to uh, present a, a pure class discourse a pure class perspective and to show that uh, the upper class in this country suffers from a sense of security and a sense of insecurity at the same time the sense of security comes from the fact that they have a certain social status they have financial stability they have uh, they have a car they have a nice flat they have nice salary so they feel safe about certain things but at the same time they know that they are in a minuscule minority and uh, that breeds its own sense of insecurity which can go to the extent of paranoia so um, but uh, my character uh, is also he is not immune to the pressure of uh, the discourse of social justice that has been elaborated over the past uh, 300 years and he says things like you know i have nothing against the children uh, i have so much they have so little so that adds an element of moral ambiguity uh, a moral relativism it's his girlfriend who sees things in black and white it's his girlfriend who who has who seems to possess absolute moral certitude so uh, that's one thing also right. the other thing is that uh, all revolutions uh mm, all revolutions see the established law as an instrument of exploitation and and oppression and uh, um every crime is for them um an act of rebellion <clears throat> you know in uh, during the russian revolution and also in the chinese in mao's revolution several criminals came and uh, uh, helped them because they saw it as an act of social redemption so that there is that that aspect of the story also uh, in my in in, in revolution so um um so uh, in a country with such wide income and wealth uh, disparities it is normal to uh, have all these feelings and all these thoughts and, and anything can happen anything anything can happen and uh, at any time there's a sense of um, unpredictability if you like 
And I call my story revolution because uh, you see a system of values and beliefs being overthrown by another system of values and beliefs. And religion, uh, in a definitively secularized context, uh, religion can present itself as a revolutionary force. Only thing is that it is regressive. It is turned towards the past. Just one sec. Just one sec. I have to answer the door. Just one sec. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, well, Asus, so, I wanted to uh, basically ask all of you to tell us what, what is the next thing that uh, you are planning to do. Uh, so, I want to start with Shomadi and figure out. Uh, Shomadi, tell us next boy book story collection. I've book. already written just now. I finished two books on cinema again. And I hope uh, which the stories, public. Uh, no, uh, short stories, I don't think any, I'm going to write anymore. I have some ideas, but uh, mm -hmm. one short story which I thought of uh, writing is about a little boy. Again, it springs from uh, real life experience. Uh, a friend, uh, an elder sister of a close friend of mine got married suddenly to a very handsome man in the military. I think he was in the Air Force. I don't really know. Her name was Mohua and... Uh, uh, the husband went away to the uh, to war and uh, did not come back. She was pregnant when he went and uh, she got a little boy. And when she got the little boy, her idea was that uh, she will not allow the boy's hair to grow until her husband comes back. But everybody knows that the husband might not come back. Maybe he was shot uh, at war and maybe he went missing or maybe he became a prisoner in the anime camp or whatever it was. But she refused and everybody said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What my story says that because the boy had long hair, what are the social distancing or social conflicts he played, played, played they impacted his life as he was growing up with long hair? In those days, you didn't have photographers and cinematographers wearing long hair. The ponytail was not in fashion. I don't know where that boy is today. And I'm, I'm worried about uh, what uh, impact it had on him because he was with boys in school and the boys would tease him and pull his hair and all that and uh, she just would not cut his hair and then the principal called the mother and said that you have to cut his hair because he's being bullied by the other student and um, it's not working correctly for him also so she cut his hair but only up to the shoulders now the whole story is on that and it ends with the boy looking at his face in the mirror and his head is entirely shaved because his mother has died. So that is an idea which, again, uh, it is based on reality. I, I don't know what happened to that boy. I don't know what happened to that mother. But this is what suddenly occurred to me when I saw all these men wearing ponytails and all that. So I sudden, uh, it suddenly occurred to me that if it was my time and a boy was forced to grow long hair, what impact it would have on his psychological uh, development and his social uh, relationship and all that. So that is the idea. I've written it down, but I don't know whether anybody's going to touch it with a 10-foot long pole unless Manjari, <laughs> Manjira brings out another book on some other subject. I don't know. I mean, this gender identity, uh, okay. shifting of okay. identity we'll of gender. We'll wait yeah. 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 No, we'll wait for it. I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll be there somewhere. And Anjana, what are you planning now? I, well, next year, I think my translation... Hello, Anjana, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is it? My, what is it? There's a... What my translation? My translation of Ritu Porno scripts are coming out next okay. year, finally. Okay. All those okay. subtitles which I did which I thought okay. would uh, needed to come out, along okay. with various scripts which he never made, various okay. stories which he was planning to make films of. So I've got that whole lot. So uh, JU Press is bringing it out. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Mm. Yeah, no, that's I, I thought it needed to be done before it. somebody it comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, oh. and and on the promise me when you when you when you come out with the book, when you come out with the book, let me know. I I I'd love to have a, a show with you on Kani platform. Uh, 
uh, once the book is out, uh, do. you have to assure me that. Do. Looking forward. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So, right. how much Only time do we have? Go back to Phoenix after some time. I don't. Think. What do you do? We are just, just uh, we are wrapping up now. We are in the wrap up process. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah one hour. One hour. What next? Yeah. Only okay. Yes, so uh, no, my, yes, right, I mean, right. So my yeah. the project that I've been you know mulling over is essentially writing my father's story, which is you know he came in 1948, and but he never spoke a lot about his, his past. But I, I I need to like document it for myself and for my children, and kind of so that would be my project. So we'll see where that goes. Okay. Okay, we look forward to it. Shomitro, what next? Well, I have written a novel and I'm looking for a publisher for it. Mojira has helped me a lot and I've sort of, um, I've gotten close to it, but not quite. I mean, uh, people have said that I'm a consummate writer, etc. They've been sort of flattering remarks. Mojira, introduce him to Renu. Mandira. No, 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 no. introduce him to uh, Renu. Myself and then Mandira later <laughs> came and told me that with us the uh, might publish uh, an anthology of short stories that she well, would like to have my contribution. Mm -hmm. So uh, the novel was given to Vitasta and Vitasta said that you know you have to cut it down by half and uh, you have to buy four hundred copies and things like that. And I oh, said that's oh, impossible. Oh. No, Surprising. I don't want to get published like that. Yeah. So I'm looking for a publisher. Yeah. And plus I'm working on a... I have uh, finished uh, 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 a novella, which is slightly longer than Revolution. And then I'm working on another novella, but it's turning out to be a longer thing. I mean, it's turning out to be a novel. It's about, mm -hmm. uh, it's about somebody who... Um, it's about... Um, a Hindu right-wing politician who ends up as the king of a small island in the Pacific. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. okay. Uh, well, to be, to be, that, that is an exciting plot. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. To, be, uh, to be fair to the publishers, yeah. where not all are uh, vanity, they do a little, they do 50-50, like, you know, they don't always have vanity publishing. But I think uh, Shomitro's uh, novel, you know, I mean, uh, uh, he, he sort of people didn't did kind of know how he wrote. So I hope this book can open up his, uh, you know, his skill and his uh, talent. Creativity. For him to be picked up by other publishers. Other better. Not better, but better. I think... Uh, uh, how many words have, had you no, sent? Mujira, what I was saying is that I think uh, 90,000, it's about 90, 97,000 words. Yeah, well, ideally, oh, so it's quite a big it, novel. You need to get it to 60. They find that saleable, mm. but mm. not more. Mm -hmm. What about Om? No. What about Om? No. Mm. No, no. 60,000 is right for an adult. Uh, I normally well, do 25 to 30 for a children's book. Okay. That's what they said, 60 from 90. But then, like Shomitra said, it'll sort of break the spine of the book. If I, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I'm saying that. Uh, yeah. Literally, yeah, literally. Yeah. So shall mm -hmm. we call it a night? Rather well, than I'm a sure. Day. I only hope that Renu is uh, watching this and uh, we are on giving our feedbacks and one more thing this is to everyone and please tell your friend those of us who may have missed out today's uh, uh, this little chat show uh, this whole recording will be up on youtube by tonight i want to thank you for the support also on the kahani kanjeti website so mm -hmm. Yeah, Renu has supported okay. me, and I, I hope that you know uh, this uh, way that on the, on the website as well as the YouTube. Okay. 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 Thank right. you so okay. much. Okay. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye
Thank you very much for being bye, here. Bye, bye, and it was you. great having this Anta. And I hope thank you all enjoyed the Anta as an Anta. Okay? Right. Thank okay, you. Bye, bye, right. bye. 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 Bye.